Atomic batteries to power, turbines to speed. Well, there's only one thing on my mind today, and it sure as heck ain't Georgia. No, it's the frost. So I need to use all my cunning and guile to fight that evil villain. Pow! So we'll start over here with the butternut squash. So the first thing I'll do is just put a little, a couple of little cages around them to support some insulation. And then I've got this sheep's wool, which actually came in some packaging for some meat I ordered online. I thought I'll keep that, that's going to come in handy. And then top them off with this insulation, which is fiberglass. And it's the kind of stuff you use to line your hot water tanks if your home has them. There, that'll keep them nice and warm tonight. The next thing I'm worried about are my sweet corn. But here too, I have a solution. I'll just put these nice little plastic boxes on the top. And toss on a few more bits of fiberglass insulation. That should keep them nice and toasty for tonight. Now I've got one or two tender things in the greenhouse, most notably my tomatoes. They're over a foot high now and they're even showing signs of their first trusses. I absolutely do not want to have my tomatoes frost damaged. So, I've got a little paraffin heater which is going to keep them all nice and toasty tonight. I've been thinking for some time about getting a little paraffin heater for in here. Not really to keep it warm at night, but just to stop it dropping below zero. And I picked that one up at a really good price. It's kind of comforting to know my tomatoes are going to be safe tonight. Now, there's a couple of things I'm still concerned about and they're both outdoors and they're both going to take quite some protecting. First of all, there's the plum tree. It's blossomed, it's pollinated and it's got little plumlets forming on it. And I really want to protect those because I'd like to have a decent crop of plums this year. Secondly is my pear tree. And you can see the little pearlets are forming. Now they'll probably survive the frost but they could be misshapen as they grow. So, I've gone and got myself a load of bubble wrap. Oh, come on, you know how it is with bubble wrap. Boop, 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 boop. So I think I'll start with the pear tree, because I think that's going to be the easiest. Here we are. Looks a little bizarre, I'll grant you, but they should be nice and toasty in there tonight. This, however, is going to be a little more challenging. So there we go, hopefully that'll give my plum tree and its tiny little proto-plums enough protection from the frost that we're going to have tonight. In fact I can leave this in place until the threat of frost has passed, which might be a day or two. Weed! Weed! It took me an hour and a half to weed this little section here. At least I've managed to liberate my lily of the valley. Again. I'll carry on and do some more weeding next week. It's just never ending. My tulips have just about finished for this year, but look, irises. Now this is the first year I've ever seen my irises flower. And maybe it's got something to do with the relentless war I'm waging against all the slugs and snails in the garden. My irises don't look nearly as munched as they have done in previous years. 
There's also this rather interesting tulip which seems to have undergone some kind of mutation. It's lost the yellow pigment and has gone white. Now I'm no expert on tulip genetics. In fact, I don't know anything about genetics much apart from that guy who did the sweet pea stuff. Can't even remember his name. You'll tell me though. But it's quite interesting, isn't it? Mendel, Gregor Mendel. I'm glad I remembered in the nick of time. One last thing to show you this week. I'm going to have a lot of columbines in this bed again. I like columbines. They're kind of sweet. Now all that's left really for me to do is light the paraffin heater and retire to a safe distance. There are some questions which remain though, most notably. Will the greenhouse burn down? Will these trees be happy in their jackets? And what exactly are the sweet corn up to in there? Tune in next time, same tiddly time, same tiddly channel. Da 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 da, tiddly.